Hi everyone, I'm Xiang Ming and I will be presenting PJ Mask, a block cipher and authenticator encryption with highly efficient mask implementation. This is a joint work with Damu, Jeremy, Stefan, Tama, Matthew and Yu. So first I will give a quick introduction followed by the specification of PJ Mask and after that Damu will continue to present on the implementation. So first the introduction. So uh, authenticator encryption with associated data or AEAD for short is a symmetric key cryptographic algorithm that provides confidentiality, integrity and authenticity. So the common parameters are the nonce, which is a public uh, one-time use number number, associated data that requires authentication but not encryption, and the message that needs to be authenticated and encrypted. And using the AEAD scheme, it will encrypt the message to a cipher text and produce an authentication tag. And during the decryption phase, you will take the same nonce, the associated data, cipher text, and the tag, and it will do the verification and decryption. So if the verification fails, it will not give any output. So you'll be a null output. And if the verification is valid, then you will output a decrypted message. So in August 2018, NIST published a call for algorithm to initiate a lightweight cryptography standardization process. It is similar to the past uh, standard standardization process like AES or SHA-3. So this time they want to have a AEAD uh, functionality algorithm. So the main, the main uh, requirement is to have a AEAD functionality and optionally have a hash function, hashing functionality. And also in the call for algorithm, they also mentioned that the ability to provide side channel resistance easily and at low cost is highly desired. So in April 2019, there are 56 submissions selected as round one candidates. And after a few months of analysis, we is uh, reduced to 32 submissions in the round two. And PJ Mas is one of the round two candidates. So PG Mask is designed to enjoy fast bit size implementation in the presence of high order uh, masking. So specifically, we favor a minimum number of end operations for efficient implementation on 32-bit platforms and a parallelization degree to address 64-bit platforms or processors with vector instructions. And we design it such that it has reasonable performance for unmask and masking uh, hardware implementation. And also the design relies on the well-studied SPN structure, which involves the Xbox layer, the diffusion layer, and the key addition. So now I'll talk about PJ mask. So there are two members of algorithm in PJ mask. The first is the primary member, which is a PJ, PJ mask 128 AEAD. And the second one is PJ mask 96 AEAD. So both of them uses the well-established OCB mode as the AEAD scheme. And OCB is one of the Caesar final portfolio for high performance because it's high, highly parallelizable. And uh, the underlying block cipher is our PJ mask 128 and PJ mask 96. So PJ mask 128 is a 128-bit block cipher, while PJ mask 96 is a 96-bit block cipher. And both of them has 128-bit key. And for the input nonce, once 
uh, PJ Mask one two AAD is ninety six bit and the other is sixty four bit, and the output tech length is one two eight and ninety six respectively. So first, I will talk about the OCB mode. So it's uh, highly parallelizable. So as you can see here, to authenticate the associated data, you would partition the associated data into blocks, and then you will XOR with some offset value that is derived from the secret key and encrypt it. And then you will XOR everything to get the authenticate value. And for the encryption, you will do something similar. So we will partition the message into blocks and we will XOR some offset value before and after the encryption. And this offset value is derived from both the secret key and the given nonce. So this will be different from the offset value used in the associated data. And finally, for the tag generation, we will take the XOR sum of all the messages, XOR with another offset value and perform the encryption. And finally, the authentication value that is generated from the generator from processing the associated data will be XOR here to give you the final tag value. So the in the original OCB, the offset value, the nonce dependent offset value is computed as follows. So I will not go through it line by line, but essentially in the specification, there is this value eight, the shift, eight bit shift over here. So this number is not selected arbitrary. There's a reason to select this number such that the last two step here, X, uh, X as a strongly XOR universal hash function. So this is a very small detail that we have to handle when we we want to convert OCB to hand to use a 96 bit block cipher variant. So because we did a quick check and realized that this, when we use this exact same parameter for the 96 bit variant, it, it does not form a strongly XOR universal hash function. So one of our tweak for the OCB to handle the 96 bit version is to perform a similar analysis done by the OCB designer. And we have selected our special parameter number to be nine. So there are several candidates as well, but we chose nine to be uh, minimally better on some platform, especially for some 8B microcontrollers where the if the shifting is close to the multiple of eight is preferred as it's less costly than other arbitrary shifting. So for the OCB mode, for the 96 b variant, we have this uh, small tweak to have the similar security. And for the main block cipher, both PGMAS128 and PGMAS96 have 14 rounds. And each round function consists of add round key, sub byte, and shift row, which is the typical SPN structure. And the key schedule is also quite similar. It has the mixed column mix and rotate rows and the add constant. So here you can see the block cipher operation is very simple. So first for the wrong function, so this is a illustration of the wrong function, of a wrong function. So first we have the bitwise key addition, followed by the sub byte, which is done column wise. And for the mixed row, it will done. It will be performed row wise. So for the one to eight bit variant, we we arrange the data as four by thirty two. Four by thirty two. So we apply thirty two S box in parallel and apply the four rows of mixed column. So for the ninety six bit variant is. Pretty similar, but we just omit one row, so it's three by thirty-two. 
and for the Xbox, we will use a 3-bit Xbox for that case. And for the key schedule, it's the same for both variants. So we have the mix column, which is done vertically. And for the mix and rotate rows, only the first row applies a diffusion layer. And for the other three rows, we have a rotation. And finally, we have a add constant to, to break the symmetry, the symmetry in the key schedule. So for the now I will talk a bit about the properties and the design rationale. So for the wrong function, the S boxes, we have the 4-bit and the 3-bit S box for the two different variants. So both of them have optimal diffusion, differential and linear properties. And it also helps to helps in the differential or linear true propagation to other rows. So it's not selected arbitrary. There's some special criteria that we uh, impose on the S-Box. And the construction of this 4-bit and 3-bit S-Box uses only 4 and 3 N operations. So when we try to do masking, you'll be more efficient because there's less uh, non-linear gates to do the masking. And for the diffusion, matrix is actually a very simple 32 by 32 binary matrix where it can it is a where there are circular matrices for compact representation and they are sparse with high branch number 12. And for the key schedule update it is fully linear so that for the masking is actually um, more efficient to do masking. And for the mixed column is the it's a four by four binary matrix with branch number four, which is actually the a matrix with all ones and zero in the diagonal. And for the mix and rotate rows, the rotation count constant are actually selected to optimize the diffusion and also selected to be close to the multiple of eight. For the same reason, we chose nine for the OCB 96 bit variant. And now I'll just quickly talk about the security analysis. So both VJ, so for the for the mode, OCB mode itself is already proven secure. So we don't really need to analyze much about that. So for the PJ mask block cipher, we show that it is resistant against differential and linear crew analysis and also invariant subspace peer analysis. And actually, it has already attracted some attention and there's a third party analysis, which their work is also published in the same venue. So they apply the higher order differential peer analysis on PJ mass 96 and using a full code book attack to perform a key recovery. However, due to the data limitation on the PJ mass when we consider the OCB mode, their attack can only attack a reduced round variant and does not threaten PJ mass 96 AEAD. So next I will pass to Demun to talk about the implementation. I'm Damon and now I will explain our implementation uh, strategy and how we produce an implementation for a target device, namely ARM Cortex M4. So first of all, uh, the implementation strategy that we decided to use for Pyjamask is the bit slice strategy. It's an implementation strategy that was initially proposed to uh, perform several parallel evaluation of Boolean circuit in software in order to um, make this evaluations faster. Um, basically, in this strategy, what you do is you look at the functions you want to evaluate as Boolean circuits. So basically, they are composed of uh, logical instructions such as XORs and NOT, working uh, bit wisely, and you transform such circuit into um, an implementation where you will work on register of a certain 
a size, na basic, namely the, the architecture size. So for Cortex M4, it's going to be 32 bit. And you will evaluate this circuit uh, using the CPU instruction, equ the equivalent CPU instruction. So for XORs, you will use the CPU XOR. And one of the main advantages here is that since uh, this Boolean circuit wa w was working on uh, bit inputs, here you will be allowed to get a high level of parallelizations because you will be able to evaluate 32 bits in parallel for each of these instructions. So it's a very efficient strategy. And more precisely, uh, recent work in the last couple of years showed that for higher order masking, it is a very sound strategy because it allows to you to uh, produce some of the best um, of and fastest implementations. So for pyjamas, what does it mean? So for the two main building blocks, basically uh, the S boxes um, and the uh, diffusion matrix, how we, will we implement this? So for the S boxes, we decided to uh, find the best Boolean circuits to evaluate them. So for the two S boxes, so for pyjamas 96 and pyjaman 128, you can see that you have a Boolean circuit composed of XORs, ANDs and NOT that evaluate the S box in a very efficient way. So this is, will be straightforward to implement. It's just XORs and N between the register and it allows us to evaluate uh, 32 S boxes in parallel since we were working bit wisely. For the diffusion matrix, uh, due to how we decided to choose it uh, with M a circulant matrix, is going to be very efficient too. So what we will do is that for each register uh, containing the state, we will do um, um, a scalar product between the matrix and this register. For each of the bits, we will multiply this uh, by the columns uh, of the matrix. And since it's circulant, we just need to shift it for the um, corresponding bits in order to get the sound output. So what we will do is that for the 30, to, for each of the 32 bits in the register, we will extract the correst corresponding bit that we are evaluating, and we will apply a mask to it in order to know if we need to add it to the accumulator or not. So if the current bit is zero, the mask will be zero. Otherwise, it's going to be a register filled with one. And then we will update the accumulator accordingly uh, by XORing it uh, to the mask ended with the column of the matrix. And this is very efficient with the, uh, both in C or assembly. So in C, what you do to compute this mask, it's almost for free or close to, you just subtract to zero the value of the bit. So it will either give you zero or, uh, or an integer filled with one since on, uh, you will work with 32-bit integer. And in ARM, due to the particularity of ARM where you have a bar shifter that allows you to shift operands in your instruction for free, you will be able to use an instruction called the arithmetic shift to the right. And what it does is it takes the uh, leftmost bit, so the sign bit, and spread it th through your register. So what you will be able to do is do this accumulator XOR for free using the barrier shifter. And this is uh, very convenient and allows you to produce a very efficient implementation. Uh, so here it's for the unmasked version of Pyjamas, how to implement these building blocks. And now we will look at how to apply masked uh, implementation to pyjama since it's, it is the main goal uh, to have very efficient higher order masking, uh, a very efficient higher order masking block size. So for masking, what you do is that you split your sensitive values into D values such that the sum is equal to the corresponding one. So here we will split the state into D shares uh, where D will be the masking order such that the XOR is equal to the initial state. The linear part will be straightforward to implement. Uh, it's just basically applying each of these linear operation to the corresponding shares of the state. So for mix row, for uh, the D shares, we will ap apply mix row on that particular share. Same for add run key and for key schedule. Uh, so it's gonna only imply a linear overhead in the uh, cost for higher order masking. The critical part are usually the nonlinear part, which uh, imply a blow up of that is at least quadratic. Uh, so to implement this for the ends instruction, we will replace them by ISW uh, multiplication. So ISW multiplication uh, are 
is a multiplication proposed by Ishai Shai and Wagner, and this is um, one of the most used multiplication when masking implementation are involved in practice. And here we applied a small tweak where we also accumulate the result into an initial register. So this is um, basically the same algorithm as ISW, but instead of directly uh, storing the outputs into C, which is the output register, we will XOR it to the previous value of C. And uh, you can easily verify that the desired output will be C XOR to the multiplication between A and B. And why did we decide to use such a tweak to ISW? It is because if you remember for the S boxes, every uh, in the circuit uh, at step three, four and five for both version, you can see that when there is a nonlinear operation, it is XOR to a previous value. And in assembly, uh, it's very costly to always load and store and data. So what we do here is that instead of computing the multiplication, loading the uh, R2 or uh, the, the output register we want to XOR it, we directly do it in place such that we avoid such loads. And this allows us to get a multiplication algorithm with higher order masking that still has the desired properties but allows us to fit or a Boolean circuit for S boxes. In terms of performances, uh, we did implement it on an ARM Cortex M4, as I was saying, that was our target uh, architecture. And we compared it to an implementation of AES that uh, Matthew and I proposed at Eurocrypt 2017 that we ported to that particular architecture. For each implementation, we propose two uh, versions uh, depending on how we produced the um, randomness, basically uh, we call it either the pooling strategy or the fast strategy. In the first strategy, um, the RNG routine checks the availability of fresh randomness before reading the RNG output register. And this will take a few clock cycle for testing, possibly waiting up to 65. So this is a slow version for uh, randomness, whereas in the fast um, method in the fast mode sorry the rng routine simply reads the uh, output register without wondering whether fresh randomness is ready or not and in this version we're assuming that we have a very fast rng uh, available um, so we can see that uh, pyjamas indeed performs very well compared to uh, aes for high order masking for small masking order it's uh, of mag the order, the speed gain is of order magnitude close to up to two, a factor two. Whereas when the the, the bigger the masking order is, uh, the bigger the gain. Uh, since we can see that we are winning up to a factor four uh, for d equal 128 in the fast mode between uh, the two implementations. So this shows that Pijamask is indeed very efficient with masking and uh, both RAM and code size uh, consumption are also quite low, uh, very lightweight compared to AES. Recently also um, further work were made uh, by Mathieu and other authors um, where they proposed a tool that automatically generates uh, sound and secure implementation, bit slice masked implementation. Um, and they applied this to several of the lightweight candidates in order to have uh, a fair uh, comparison of their efficiency and also produce secure implementation using formal methods. And uh, so I invite you to check their work. It was published at Eurocrypt 2020. In, in this work, uh, we can see that Pijamask is also performing very well uh, with higher order masking compared to other methods. Thank you for your attention. Um,